Hello, so I've got an Emu Systems sampling percussion, or SP12, in the studio. Uh, and I've already done a video on its much more famous brother, the SP1200, and goodness knows how many videos with the Isla S2400. So I was thinking, what kind of video could I do with this that I haven't already done before? And then Lady Luck came to my door. And when I say Lady Luck, I mean Andrew Ward. Lady Luck is what he goes by on the weekends. And Andrew has in his possession a number of things that used to belong to Genesis, including Tony Banks' JD800 with the Genesis Tor patches in it. And don't worry, that will get a video of its own and it will get a little cameo in this video. But something else he has is this rather innocuous looking box of diskettes. Uh, and when you open it, you find out that it's a load of discs for the SP12 that used to belong to a Mr. Phil Collins and a Mr. Mike Rutherford. So I thought in this video we'd find out what's on these discs. So firstly, a huge thank you to Chris Poacher who has lent us a drive so we can get the data off. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and it's really easy to get the data into an SP12. You just use this cassette slash disc menu, choose disc, and then choose what you want to load, sounds or sequences or segments. So the first thing I'm going to go through are these Phil Collins custom sample discs. Now there's only eight user slots on the SP12, the rest of the slots use internal EEPROMs. Plus, even with the turbo expansion, you've only got five seconds of sample time. So a lot of these discs are just going to contain two or three samples or something like that. So for convenience, I'm going to sample all the sounds out of the SP12, put them in contact, and then we can access them all at the same time. Right, so what's on the Phil Collins sound discs? A very gated kick drum. Oh, a very gated snare drum. It's kind of a snare clap. Wicked. Another gated snare. So, Phil. Okay, these are two snares that were on the same disc. It's the same snare, isn't it? Twice. Just different samples. Oh, gated tom. More gated toms. Oh. So ridiculously of the era. Another kick, I think. Some drier toms. Which is a bit distorted. I need to resample those, but. Tambo. Hats. Cowbell. Uh, marimba or something. That's interesting. It's like a kalimba or something. Xylophone. Some kind of metal. That sounds like metal reversed. And again, that's interesting. <laughs> of course. And another one. <laughs> oh, the 80s. Okay, the next disc is Phil Collins' sequences, segments and songs. And I love the fact that they've mislabeled this as the 13th of February 1896 instead of 1986. Now, there's a load of custom variables here that I don't know the answers to. So firstly, you've got internal EEPROMs and you can change those like you can on the Lindrum. You've then got your custom samples and I don't know which samples match these sequences. You also need to assign your mix and I don't know what their mix was. So this may be total garbled nonsense, but I'm just going to pick a sound disc and then use these sequences and see what comes out.
Okay, the mic and the mechanics sample discs. So some of these are actually labeled so I can tell you exactly what they are. So the first two sounds. Recognize it? Those are the kick and snare samples used on the hit song, All I Need Is A Miracle. And if you listen to the song, you can hear the drums on their own at the start and it is definitely that kick and that snare, which isn't surprising because these have come from Mike Rutherford's own disc. The next sample is another snare. And that is the snare from Silent Running, although on the record it's got a big reverb on it. I guess they didn't have enough sample time to capture the reverb, whereas the gated sounds they could, so they capture it with, with reverb in place. But you'd need to add reverb to it, but that is the snare. The next snare is awesome. It's got a real grounce to it. Wicked snare, and that is the snare from I Get The Feeling. And if you listen to the track, sure enough, that is the snare. Okay, finally, we've got some toms. And that is actually one of the same sounds that's on Phil Collins' discs. They're obviously shared sounds. Very electronic sounding one. And then... This one is the sample that is used on Taken In. If you listen to the, the song, that is the tom. And it's definitely in there. Okay, as a little bonus, there were some sounds that weren't labelled, so I don't know whose sounds these are. A bass. Quite a lively snare. Kind of whip noise kind of sound. Kind of reggae sounding snare. Oh. And a tom that's got delay on it that they've captured while sampling. And that's the end of them, yeah. So there we go, something a little bit different with the Emu SP12. I hope you found that interesting. I found that fascinating, getting a glimpse behind the curtain at the 80s Genesis production machine via these uh, strange discs from the past. Um, huge thank you to Andrew Ward for lending these and for Chris Poacher for the drive so we could get the sounds off. Some of the sounds are labelled so we know what they are. Other sounds aren't. So if you're a Genesis nut and you're screaming at the screen, I recognise that. Please let me know because I'd love to get the full answers on the contents of these discs. Um, a huge thank you also to my patrons on Patreon who keep me afloat. I think the last thing to do is take these sounds on the SP12, an ARP avatar, which uh, Mike Rutherford used, and Tony Banks' very own JD800. I'll use some of the Genesis tour patches and let's do a little fake Genesis play out.